The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live. Phenomenal women. Featuring in depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, Phenomenal Women. I don't think that I can live no other way. Yeah. Truth be told, I'm living now on an eight. I'm loving this song. Yeah. I've seen them blessings in the mind. This is my hip hop Fridays oh. right here. Erica Campbell, oh. her single. Oh. Big up oh. to Erica Campbell. Oh. Phenomenal oh. woman number one. It's like, oh. Yes, yes. All right, welcome. Happy Friday, as you can tell I'm in a good mood. <laughs> and guess what I'm getting ready to do? I'm Ashita Andre. Oh my gosh, she introduced herself. I introduced herself. myself, even after all that, because I love guys. <laughs> and with me, I have my co-host, Tara Johnson. Hello, hello. I'm in a good mood, too. I love I guys, mean, I do. <laughs> I'm loving this song. I heard it for the first time, and I'm trying to just plug myself in, but I do have to talk about it. I, I heard it the first time on Thursday, because mm-hmm. I do Mary Mary After Show for After Buzz, which is our sister network. And I was just like, oh, I just love this song. And me and the other co-hosts was just dancing it up, getting it in, like, <laughs> like we in the club. <laughs> I have to ask you, though, do you remember when you and I attended Joy Stars yes. event, and we met Erica Campbell yes. and Warren and Warren's mother? I was just looking at that footage this week, so big ups to Erica. And I mean, I'm loving this single. When we met her, she was just thinking of, like, she hadn't released the first album. Now she's out with album number two, two. and she killing what I love, guys. Yeah, she killing it with this one. <laughs> All right. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. (laughs) All right, so let's get into our phenomenal women. Let's get into our show. I'm really excited about this particular story. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah Thomas. I mean, I I just got to give her up. She is NFL's first female game official. I am so excited for her. And I'm just like, we got a female on the field. How about officiating. that? Officiating. How about that? It took us a really long time so, to like even forever. get. forever. Right. <laughs> forever to even get a female. Remember it was a big deal when there were female news sportscasters. Yes. And they were going to locker rooms and do interviews and that type of thing. That was a big deal. Now you have a female on the field calling the plays. Yes. The coaches and the players got to bow down to Sarah Thompson. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> because yes. she is. She is holding it down and calling the shots for real. I'm loving this. So I'm going to give a little background. So NFL broke its own gender barrier on Wednesday. This happened on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And naming the first female game official in its history with the selection of con- with at the selection of Conference USA veteran Sarah Thomas. Thomas, who's been officiating football for 19 years, who says, I quote, I did not set out to become an NFL official, but further along, I went into progress in Conference USA. Part of me thought it might be a reality. And here we are. It is reality. And I'm just loving this. I think this is great. And, you know, she has she's married. She has three kids. So just think about the kids who are just like, wow, my mom my is mom. the first. My mom's on the field with the football yeah. players. And yeah. she's calling the shots. She's calling the shots. Now, you know, I'm about to talk about this. Well, talk about it. How do you stay focused? <laughs> That would be a question for Sarah. I'd be like, oh, you cute. I mean, I know she's married, but I'd be like, oh, you cute, you cute. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's clearly a question for her because I don't have yeah. that answer. <laughs> looking at all them butts and everything. Me, I would just be like, what call? What? what I know. Damn? I'm what? sorry. What? I was just looking at this guy right here. My bad. I was like, you single? What's going on? Okay, fine. Fine. I get it. <laughs> I don't know how she would stay be, I know. It would be real hard for me to stay a little bit focused there. But I am so proud of her. And she just, an article just came out. She did an interview with USA actually today. And she talked about how they telling her she can't wear makeup. I read that And too. she's like, wait, I can't wear makeup. But they explained to her, look, you guys can't have beards. No one is on the field. Everybody's in uniform. And so for you to blend in, it's not necessarily a discrimination, but it's just about, you know, let's just all stay in uniform. Let's just all be the same. You can't wear makeup. The men can't have beards and mustache. And so she's like, you know what? I get it. I understand. And you know what? If you think about it, 
why would you want to have makeup and you run it back and forth? You, you know, your, your mascara was smeared, your, you know, your lipstick will be all over the place. And, you know, I think she has a, she's been doing this for 19 years. Maybe a little bit, a little bit lip gloss. Definitely <laughs> for me, definitely lip gloss yeah, and at least some eyeliner and maybe some mascara. I don't think she wants to do like, do it really big and be like glamour shots out on the, but she wants, she said she wanted to wear makeup, like makeup. But there are a lot of women who feel, and there's no, no shade to this. There's yeah. a lot of women who feel more comfortable when they're out with their face on. And now she, now her face is going to be <laughs> well, in front of the NFL television viewers, which are millions, like millions but she's beautiful she doesn't i mean i think she's fine i I don't see any issue why but just to make sure you might want to have some waterproof you know during those times where you you know officiating and you're in those snowstorms and raining and you just have all this blackness so you're like is that way is she part of the team is she over there trying to (laughs) (laughs) so you know but i i I, i'm just so excited i'm i can't wait for football season to start Mm -hmm. to see her and just just to get in the game. Yeah, I, I'm really curious because not that I think this is weird at all. I think it's fantastic. That yeah. I'm sure that she's not the only female NFL like I mean football ref out there. But to get to this level, it's always a question of how are the other refs going to treat her in the beginning? Because for the Trailblazers or any of these type of things, the first person normally encounters something, whether it be just they're just a little like maybe they only have one referee locker room. I don't know. And right. she and she's like a little uncomfortable. They're a little uncomfortable with her, but. She's gone through 19 years of it. Clearly, she knows how to deal with the men. Let's just make sure the men know how to deal with her. Which is always an issue. Step up your game. You know, they always have an issue with that. Yes, Sarah's coming after you. Kept step up ooh, your game. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Speaking of stepping up your game, mm-hmm. I know I spoke about Taraji P. Henton last week, but the girl is just doing fabulous she stuff. I mean, stuff she's just on. kicking ass yes, right now is. and I'm loving it and I'm just gonna say the power of a single role because this role right here is just giving her all kind of power. It really is. So guess what? Cookie John, Cookie Lion. I don't know why I keep calling her Cookie Johnson. Cookie Lion she from my Empire. Cousin. I know, right? <laughs> is going to write a memoir, which I love. It's, gonna, it's slated to come out in 2016. And she's going to talk about how she made it, how she was a single mom and grew up in the tough area of Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. And I just can't wait to read it. I love memoirs. I love reading how, you know, women made it, especially when they're a single parent, especially when they're struggling, how they made it from audition to audition to audition and never gave up. Right. And now we see her where she is. And I picked this particular picture. Look you at kn- you with the empire. I know. <laughs> Big ups to empire because everyone around here is like, what is it, two weeks? Because it's this role. It's just this role. It's, it's, it's been two to. weeks since the, their season finale. And people, are, every Wednesday, I hear people like weeping and wailing and crying. Yes. Like, where's my empire? Where's yeah. my- and the memes are hilarious. Yep. <laughs> like, what you doing this week without watching empire? <laughs> right. It's like life has stopped since empire is no longer right, on. Have right. they, even annou- they haven't announced when the second season is coming back. They have not yet. At least I I don't know. I, don't, I, haven't, I, don't, heard. I haven't heard anything. Um, but we already know that they already got a full season. Oh, please. Yeah. So it's just. Fox would be crazy. Man, they are just killing it right now. They are killing the game right now. And they're killing it more because it's limited commercials, which no other network does. Right. And that's what I also love about it. It's limited commercial interruptions. So you only get three commercials and you back watch it. So you get the full 90, I mean, uh, 60 minutes right. almost. Well, there's, you know? there's too much going on in that show to like do the regular, you know, 20 minutes of commercial. Yeah. I mean, you'd miss something. You'd miss a whole like right. two or three right. storylines. Right. So much happens in well, that show. Well, they just want to make sure that you don't get up and go nowhere and have time to oh, change no. the channel and do anything else. So they make sure limited commercial interruptions, you're going to stay right there, sit on that couch and not even touch the remote to flip to anything else to miss it and that's what because I don't I don't I don't touch it oh I don't well, touch it at all or you don't let anybody else touch it either I've heard right. people been like don't don't touch my tv when yeah. the fire's on yeah <laughs> you know what I used that used to be like it used to be like sex in the city remember when yeah. sex in the city would come on and you just don't don't, don't bother, talk to me don't for even, 30 minutes don't bother me yeah don't talk to yeah. me <laughs> don't say a word to me. I do remember that. Oh, I, yeah, I, I like miss that. them. Yeah. I miss them. So what you got for us today? But I also want to mention for everyone to tune in this Saturday because Taranji is actually going to host SNL for the first That's time. That's right. And they and I've heard she sings, she dances, she has a great comedic timing. So it's supposed to be a great show. I can't wait to watch it. Thanks for shouting that out. Right? Because I want to hear all about it. Yes. So speaking of another woman who's doing great things, Mm -hmm. and the question has been for the past year or so, will she or won't she? Well, we found out or heard possibly that on Sunday, she will. And we're talking about Hillary Clinton Mm -hmm. is finally going to announce that she's going to run for president in 2016. And I think it's interesting because 
inside sources have said that she's going to release a video via social media to tell everyone that she's going to run. How, you know what? I don't, I don't <clears> want to <throat> interrupt you, but how does this get leaked? I want to be right. shocked. I'm like, oh my God, Hillary's running. That's Not, why I'm I like, want, yeah. inside, <laughs> inside sources. Why do they do that? Well, cause, <laughs> because I think it's supposed to be the thing of, oh, really, she is, but we don't want you to miss it. So we want to tell you ahead of time so you can tune in and look out for it. <laughs> now I want to be like, oh my God, did you hear? Yeah, right. I wanted to be, well, she, you know, of breaking. she wants to be a trending topic, yeah, yeah. right? So she can't be trending and ain't nobody heard it. So look <laughs> out for They will your... pick up on it as soon as she announces oh, it. As soon yeah. as she announces it. So yeah. check out for, you know, CNN, mm -hmm. Huffington Post, Twitter, Facebook, everything. If Hillary announces this on Sunday, we're all going to find out. You know what? This is going to be so fascinating. And I'm going to say this. In my lifetime, mm -hmm. black president. Yep. And the possibility following the black president would be the would be a female president. Absolutely. In my lifetime. In your lifetime. In, in our lifetime. Yeah, right. In the engineer's lifetime. Right. And I won't say in my short <laughs> lifetime because I ain't that old. Right. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Right. But you're right. It's a potential to have the first female yes. president. And not only that, her husband was a president before. So if she becomes president, will we call Bill Clinton like first man? Or like what would we call I him? I know, right? But, I think he would be former president still. Would, would he? probably yeah he would probably be mm -hmm. but even if let's and i hate to even put it out there but even let's say she doesn't win because this will be her second time running right we can't knock her resume no i mean this woman has served as senator of new york mm -hmm. then even though she lost to obama she came back and served as his secretary of state for four years yes and she penned her memoirs her, her second book and what she said was one of the reasons she decided to run was because she became a grandmother for the first time this year Mm. And having her grandchild, she says in her in the new epilogue to her book, which mm -hmm. you can see on Huffington Post. I read it today. She said that one of the reasons why she did it was becoming a grandmother has made me think deeply about the responsibility we all share as stewards of the world. And we inherit and will one day pass on rather than making it want me to slow down. It stirred me to speed up. Mm. So it seems like we have a whole lot coming from Hillary Clinton, either like as president or even if she doesn't win, but she is the in the like the top Democratic nominee right now. So right. she's in as far as the primaries are concerned, like even like the preliminary ones, Hillary is the person on the ticket. Well, I wonder who will be her vice president. I don't know. Ticket. I'm very curious. Do you think America's ready for a female president? Absolutely. Do you think we're ready? Yeah. Do you guys think we're ready for Absolutely. a female president? I would love to hear everyone's thoughts about she that. She just can't cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I have to say Don't show because they will ridicule the citizens. <laughs> but, but you know, a lot of people in her campaign are saying instead of her coming out being like a politician and a diplomat, right. her campaign is going to focus on the fact that she's a mother and a grandmother. They're trying to give the more human side to her. Yeah. But I don't dare think Hillary's gonna cry. She, she better not. She don't look like a cry. Just go to me. go go inside somewhere because you know they're gonna be like, oh, she's too emotional. This right. is why we can't have women. Yeah. I yeah. don't see Hillary as a crier myself. I don't either. I, you know what? Sometimes I wonder, and this is, I mean, it's one of the most powerful positions in the world. Yes. But it's like, why would you want that job? It's a, it's a, it's I mean, that is, I mean, we're about, to, we're, we're going to run out of water right. supposedly in a year. Right. I would not want that stress. Now I do remember <laughs> it when I was in the third grade, I had yeah. to write a paper about what do you want to be when you, when you grow up? And I said, I wanted to be the first female African-American president uh -huh. that lasted probably a two weeks. And I think I was like, Oh, I want to be a psychiatrist. I don't want to be right. something else. But for those two weeks, I was serious. Serious. Yeah, I like put a campaign together and yeah. everything. So that was me in the third grade. Me now as an adult, understanding what the the position holds and requires, yes. it's a lot. It's a lot. Have we we've seen how much it's great Obama in the last mm -hmm. almost eight years? Can you imagine? That's a lot. Yeah, not that Hillary isn't you know capable. No, not that she's capable. It's just, you know, just asking. It's, a lot. it's like, that is a job. It is an absolute 24-7 24 position. Yes. And I'm sure if she announces on Sunday, since sources are revealed I and know, it's been leaked, I know. if she announces her candidacy, we'll definitely be talking about it throughout the election because oh, absolutely. it's potentially of the first president. And at the Democratic female. National Convention, right? Absolutely. Because I missed Obama's. Oh, did you? Yeah. Everybody be watching this one. Yes. Everybody will be watching this one. Maybe even making it to the inauguration. <laughs> I'm already Hil telling her she won. Right. Hillary. You got two campaign members <laughs> yes. right here. Hire us. Right. Hook us up. Yeah. Actually, we'll be the media that follows you during your campaign. There we go. And there we go. Boom. It's this, It's just that easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Something that's also coming across as yeah. very easy is Orange is the New Black just released its trailer for, th for the third season. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as viewership, it seems to be really easy for this show because I checked the YouTube video, which was just released yesterday. 
about 5.15 this afternoon, and it already had 3.95 million views for this show. Wow. Do you watch Orange I don't the- watch it. I don't watch Orange. I watch like the pilot and maybe the first five or six episodes. But in the first two seasons of the show, they've gotten Emmy nominations yeah. and, and awards, SAG awards. They've been awarded by the L- LB, LGT. LGBT. Thank you. Wait. Right? <laughs> we're going to get ridiculed we, for we, that. And we're sorry. <laughs> You know our heart's in the right place. Um, I've been awarded for their for their representation on the show Morning. of all sorts of women. So we appreciate the show for that. And a lot of their cast members, she gonna be all right. We I just <laughs> snorted. I didn't mean to. It's okay. She, it's, my wife. You know, TV. It's all right. Oh my God. She's on a, she's on a good mood. Today's Friday. I am in a good mood. But she loves Jesus. I That's love all God. that matters. I love God. Yes. That's all that matters. <laughs> One of their award winning cast members, mm-hmm. Uzu Adube, who plays Crazy Eyes. I yes. think you've seen her. She won uh, an Emmy in 2014 and a SAG award in, in 2015, but she's taking on a new challenge. She's actually going to be running in the Boston Marathon this mm. year. And she's running because she's lost some dear family friends and, and members of her family and friends to cancer. She lost um, an aunt to leukemia, a cousin to breast cancer. She has another aunt who's cur- currently fighting breast cancer. And this past October, she lost someone who she considered her second mom to cancer. Yeah. So she's running this marathon. This is only the second marathon that she's ever run, but she's doing it and she's actually coupling with the, oh, I can't, it's some kind of foundation. I hate to, I'm so sorry, I missed the, the name, but she's coupling with them and her whole purpose, she said, of running this marathon is that she wants to honor all of her family and friends that she's lost, but she also wants to kick cancer's ass. How about that? I like that. And I'm all down about that. I and like you can that. look on health, women's health mag, mag.com because she actually released a short video <clears throat> and it tells her story and the reason why she runs. So we say big ups and run, run on some yes, more. Yes, absolutely. We're rooting for you. We're rooting for you. Yes. It has to be you because I could probably walk a half marathon. I don't know about running a full. I haven't even thought of training. <laughs> <laughs> I have friends who run. I just, when they talk about the blisters on their feet oh. and, and so then that I'm usually like, you know what? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I will, you let me know if you want me to come to any marathon you're running. Cause I would fix it. I would do a sign. Mm-hmm. I will stand on the sideline. I will get you a glass of water, right. some Gatorade, anything you need. You need a cheerleader. <laughs> I am there. Right. We'll videotape it. We'll videotape we'll do the it. Whole, we'll, do, we'll be a whole media press kit. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Just think twice about asking me to run. Right. <laughs> and speaking of that, who is your phenomenal woman of the My week? My phenomenal woman of the week. So we did talk about Black Girls Rock mm-hmm. last week, and I hope everyone caught the show. I did. did. Were you able to catch it? And I'm working. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But I have it on DVR still. Okay. You have to catch the show. It was Amaze balls. That's my word. I brought it back, but it was amaze balls. <laughs> but one of the highlights of the show for me was the lifetime, a lifetime, the legacy award that was given to Cicely Tyson. Mm. So Cicely Tyson is she fierce? Is my phenomenal woman of the week. Now she has been quoted, and you know how Wikipedia and other things can maybe get a few things wrong, but she has been cited as being ninety years old, and ke- and she killing it, and she cute and fabulous she at is. ninety years. Oh, you sound like her too. 19, mm-hmm. you know, you, 19 speaks, years old. Yes. I loved the show when she said they, they told me I have three minutes to, to speak, but it took me three minutes to get up here. Him is okay. what she said. <laughs> I so appreciate that. But what she said that was really important was she wanted everyone to know. She said to young ladies, I want you to understand that if anyone out there takes the time to badger you or degrade you, they're doing it because in some shape, form or fashion, you're a threat to them and you have Ooh. to understand your worth. She told everyone to make sure they respect their elders and realize that we're not on the shoulders of our elders. We're on the backs of our elders Mm -hmm. and we are the seeds for which the elders planted. And you you have to respect that. It was a a fantastic speech. And also I want to give, you know, props to her because she's had a long career. Yes, she has. She started as a model and was discovered by a photographer for Ebony magazine. And she did her first film role in 1951. She's been around ever since that time. She even did a stint on The Guiding Light, which used to be my favorite soap opera. We don't watch soap operas anymore, but that's what me and my grandmom used to do. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Back in the day. Back in the day. She's been nominated for 11 Emmys, won three. She was nominated for an Academy Award. And in 2013, she actually took home a Tony for her role in My Life is Bountiful. 
And I don't know if anybody else saw it. I saw it. Did you see her in the episode of How to Get Away with Murder? I did. I did. When you're that good that you can come in and completely take over a show that you're not even on mm-hmm. on a regular basis and right. shut it down in five minutes. Yes. Because your boss, please recognize a VIP, your boss... She came out of my V and her daddy's P. I was done. Right. I was done. Right. I was done. Kind of like what Missy Elliott did for the. <laughs> right. Right. That's exactly for the what it Bowl, is. She just for took over. Took it over. Yeah. We were like, Katie. Okay. Who? Wait, Katie. Right. Katie, right. Katie, right. Katie, right. <laughs> but she was phenomenal in that yeah. episode. So for me, I want to respect my elders. I want to respect her talent. And I want to respect her beauty. And Cicely Tyson is my phenomenal woman. I of love the it. Week. I love And you know, could you imagine sitting with her? for dinner oh and just i mean she's been through i mean she's seen the i mean it's like she's seen the world she's She's seen seen everything everything. she's seen everything she's seen everything the wisdom that she has i would just love to sit and have dinner with her and she and she imparts that wisdom because she actually has a performing arts school in new jersey yeah and she was actually a co-founder of the dance theater of harlem which i did not know yeah i didn't know that so she takes all of her skills and she gives back She's 90 years old. I do not. I mean, she's not slowing down at all. I mean, if I look like that, I pray I look right. like that at 90. Right. In her white fabulousness. White, fabulousness. Her, yes. I love it. All day I long. I love it. I love it. So I, love I hope it. that she continues to kill the game. Cicely Tyson's my girl. That's Amen. it. Man. My girl. I love God. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> well, my phenomenal woman of the week is Lauren Hill. Now, you know, bouncing back off to the cancer. Mm hmm. Lauren Hill, if you guys remember, you know, the basketball player who inspired millions and even with her prognosis as an inoperable brain tumor, Mm -hmm. she still played. And unfortunately, she lost her battle this morning. But that's not the reason why. I mean, it's it's what she's done in the short time that she's been here with us is just phenomenal. And I just want to read what she did before she passed on this morning, what her schoolmates did, the teachers, everyone rallied around. So Hill, uh, Lauren Hill was a freshman at Ohio's Mount St. Joseph University where she gained national attention by taking to the court last fall despite her grave diagnosis. The team rallied behind her and convinced the NCAA to move up their season. Oh, wow. Right? opener to give her a chance to play when i read that i just started crying already so i'm trying to hold it together this way she made two layups scoring the first and last baskets of the game and so she said this is the greatest day of my life to a sold out crowd she stood half court saying let's not call it the last game this is my first collegiate game and i just you know it's just amazing that she was able to play knowing what what was What's going, going on. on then not only did she not d- just did that she did other things as well right so she scored five baskets in all her point total a perfect 10 during oh. the game she also made a lasting mark by starting a charity called the cure starts now to raise money for pediatric brain cancer research and treatment so far this is an astounding number she has raised more than 1.5 million dollars Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. And she's going to be missed and she will not be forgotten. No. She's, I mean, we're going to remember her forever, what she's done. And, you know, um, through The Cure Starts Now, if you would like to donate, you can go to the website, thecurestartsnow.com. Unfortunately, she lost her battle this morning, but she will not be forgotten. And I'm trying not to cry. I know. It's just so hard. And, um, That's my Phenomenal Woman of the Week. I love these type of stories. I think she's a phenomenal woman. And we could have actually had a picture of all of her teammates also. Because I love stories like this when you just see people, women, rallying around other people in the time of need. Because they could have just simply been like, all right, Mm -hmm. well, we can't help you. You know, the season is the season. We can't change that. But they were like, no, we're going to fight. Because we know how important it is for you to play. Even if it's in one game. That game can mean the world to somebody. So And it did. And it did. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, we all need help. Sometimes we all need support of people who love us. Absolutely. And that's just an example of your girls rallying behind you and making it happen. And you know you have your girls behind you. You can do anything. At- you can do anything. You can do anything. You can do anything you with can your do girls anything behind with you. with your girls and your teammates and your family. That's it. I'm loving it. That's it. Well, you want to close the show today? I'm a little emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> 
for being with us on another episode of Phenomenal Women. We really appreciate you being here. This is Ashidi on, on Ray. She's, yes. she's wiping her eyes and yes. I completely yeah, understand. Yeah, right? I'm Tara Johnson. <laughs> you can find Ashida on... You can find Ashida on Ray on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. At, Ash, at uh, Ashida, Ashida on Ray. Ray. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at TJ Wagging Her Tail. Until next time, continue to be inspired. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.